Hi folks, this is new, a video about algorithmic composition. In the last video I argued how algorithmic composition can be a deliberate and uh, controlled process as opposed to just a way of generating random outputs. In this video I want to give a practical example of that by using a motion simulation to generate scores. So let's start. that I'm using uh, is just a simple way of calculating the position of an object in space uh, at the given time. The motion is just left to right, so it's a, a one-dimensional motion, and I'm using three parameters to uh, generate this output at any given time, and the parameters are the space width, the space in which the object is moving left to right and right to left, the length of the object, and uh, finally the speed of the object. algorithm receives three parameters, so the space width, uh, the object length, and the object speed, and it outputs a value every time it receives a uh, iteration index. This is a way of generating uh, varying uh, values, but they're not random. They follow a principle, uh, a principle of this bouncing motion uh, in space, which will produce eventually periodic patterns. Uh, the periodicity of these patterns is dependent on the uh, parameters that I give. So, um, and uh, I can uh, use this algorithm to layer uh, different uh, voices to generate a texture that is pseudo-random, but actually I, I can have some control over one parameter that I find particularly interesting to use is the width of the of the space. So whenever I increase the width of the space, I will have uh, increasingly more complex uh, rhythms. While if I shrink the space in which these objects are moving, the um, objects will start moving in a more uh, constrained way, so more predictably and that will, uh, will give me a parameters to control the level of randomness that I have in my pattern, which is something that um, I find useful uh, in, in many cases. And that will uh, allow me to move gradually from more predictable to more unpredictable patterns, which is something that I referenced in, uh, in the previous video. The three parameters I was talking about. So I have the width of the of the, um, the space, then I have the speed of the object, and then I have 
the duration of the object. And I um, took a simple case in which I have a 4-4 measure and then uh, 16 notes is my smallest value. So I divide the measure into 16 steps and then I have the, the object in, in my note move at the speed of 1 16 note per iteration. And then um, the length of the note is 3 16 notes. The bouncing pattern object that I created outputs a tuple of values. Uh, one is the uh, position in space. And the second one is the direction uh, in which the object is moving. So when it's zero, it's moving left to right. And when it's uh, when it's uh, one, it's moving from uh, right to left. This is the unnormalized uh, value. So it just gives me integers values for, for the position. While this position is normalized and it gives me a um, zero to one position. The iterations are going uh, up and up. There is no limit because the object will just, uh, it's a periodic output so the object will just keep bouncing back and forth so there is a question that comes to mind how uh, can a note mo move backwards in time of course it can't because time moves only forward we can still use this idea of the bouncing motion to create patterns every time i have uh, a new value i will just offset this new value to the next measure. I'm collecting it and then outputting as a single list. Um, I, I can have my pattern just as a sequence of measures. So in the main patch, I have a um, way of generating multiple voices and uh, create some layerings because of course, by itself, each one of these patterns it's not particularly interesting, but uh, we, we start hearing some complexity and some uh, coherence in the organization whenever we start layering different uh, objects that are bouncing around. The way I organize this, uh, having a list of widths, so uh, having a list of width 2, width 3, 8, and 2, and then each of this width is going to be repeated a number of times, and that will create variations in the texture uh, and of course these variations are dependent on the list of speeds and durations and each combination of this will produce a different pattern uh, but they will all be regulated by um, the width the width will be common to all of this uh, voices so they will move um, in a sort of monophonic way or monorhythmic way, way rather um, where uh, the patterns within the width will be uh, different, but every voice is moving within the same width. I have a velocity mode. So in velocity mode um, zero, uh, the closer uh, the note is to the left edge of the space, uh, the louder it is. In mode one, the closer it is to the right edge of the space, the louder it is. And in mode two, Actually, the middle is the loudest point and it fades out at the, at the, other, at the outer edges. <laughs>